Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for another Unity Basics tutorial. My name is Darren and today I'm going to be teaching you guys about prefabs in Unity 3D. So we're going to talk about what prefabs are, how they can be used, and as always in these tutorials I'm going to be providing a demonstration of how to use prefabs at the end of the tutorial. Alright, so let's start off by defining what prefabs are. A prefab is a reference to a game object that stores all of the components of that object. So you can think of a prefab as simply, um, for now, you can think of it as just a copy of the object that you want to duplicate. So why use prefabs? Okay, so prefabs provide an editable interface for all copies. So if an edit is made to the prefab or um, an instance of that prefab, then all copies of the prefab will get edited. Alright, so what are the benefits of using prefabs? Well, it's quick and painless to make changes to large groups of objects. So if you have, uh, let's say you have a box, and that box has certain properties, and it's one of those objects that is sort of scattered around your scene, um, and you find out after you lay out all of these objects in your scene that you forgot to add a component to it. Well, if you have a prefab, then you can uh, just add that component to the prefab, click apply, and all of the all of the boxes in your scene um, will get that component added to it. So it's really handy for stuff like that. Um, another use of prefabs is if you want to instantiate an object at runtime, you will have to create a prefab and send that prefab as a reference, um, as a game object reference to th that script that is instantiating the object. Okay, so again just a quick recap of the benefits they're quick and painless to make changes to large groups of objects and they are instantiable at runtime okay so why not just duplicate the object well if you think about the the scenario I just gave to you um, if you're duplicating all of those boxes in your scene and you forget to add the component then you'll have to go through each one of those uh, if you're gonna have to go through each one of those boxes in your scene and add the component individually whereas again if you had the prefab you could just add it to the prefab click apply and all of those objects would get that component attached to it it's not just for uh, adding components it's also if you have an if you have a script attached to a prefab for instance and you want to change a setting on that script basically any change that you make to that prefab will affect all of the instances of that prefab. Okay, so since we have a clear understanding of what prefabs are, it might be beneficial to actually go into Unity and show you guys how this actually works. Okay, so here we are in Unity, and what I'm going to start off by doing is creating what will soon be my prefab. So to do that, I'm just going to create an object. Any object in the hierarchy can be a prefab. I'll go to uh, create a cube. All right, and I'll just call this my prefab. All right, so I have a box here called my prefab. Um, I'm actually going to be editing this box collider. So let's let's show what happens if this isn't a prefab. Okay, so I'll go ahead and just duplicate it since that would be the the other option here. So I have all of these different um, prefab or all the all of these different cubes in my scene. And let's say that I want to. Um, I forgot to resize my box collider. Okay, so I actually want my box collider to be a little bit, um, a little bit longer on the vertical plane. Okay, on the vertical axis. Okay, so this is what I want my collider to actually look like. Well, there's no way that I can actually apply this setting to the rest of these cubes because it's not a prefab. So if I click on any one of these other cubes, their collider are, is still the default and I want the collider to look like this. Okay, so I'll back out a little bit here. And now what I want to do is delete these duplicates. And I'm going to create a prefab now. So to create a prefab, you will take the object from the hierarchy, click and drag it into your project pane. Okay, so I'm just going to drop it in my assets. And now you can see this little blue box shows up um, called my prefab, which is the name of the object in the hierarchy. And now what I can do if I even wanted to, I could even uh, delete the game object, although I'm not going to. Um, but now you can see that if I make a change to my prefab, okay, so I'm clicked on my prefab here in the uh, project pane. If I make a change to the box collider, so I'm going to move my uh, size on the Y to 2. Then you can see when I click on my prefab in the hierarchy, it made that adjustment for me. So I'll go back and I'll set it back to 1 to prove that it works. I'll click on my prefab again, 
and there it's back to normal. All right, so let's create a few instances of this prefab. So at this point, since it is a prefab, I don't have to keep dragging the prefab in. So since I have an instance of my prefab, I can actually duplicate that instance and it does the exact same thing. And you will know because the prefab text is a little bit different color. It's not black, it's actually this dark blue. All right, so now whenever I make an edit to my prefab, it'll actually change all of these cubes. Let me move them around so you can actually see this working visually. Okay, so you can see the green outline around these cubes representing the box collider. Now I'm going to come down to my prefab and I'm going to modify the Y size of the box collider to 2. And now when I click on any one of these, you can see that they all changed and all I did was modify um, one of these uh, prefabs. All right, So I don't have to, if I want to make modifications, I don't have to make it through the prefab reference right here. And another important note that's worth mentioning is that um, I can actually make these slightly unique. So they don't, all of the properties don't have to be exactly the same. So I could make it to where just this one is set to one. All right, and you can see that it's a little bit darker color here, the setting that I just manipulated, and that means that it hasn't been applied yet. So this is prefab three, and you can see that the, the green outline here is the default collider size. Now if I click on any of these other ones, it hasn't changed that yet. So what I have to do is if I want to modify, if I want to make that a setting that is true for all instances of this prefab, then I have to come up here and click apply right here. Okay, so I click apply and once I do that, I can click on all these prefabs and you can see that the size is uh, back to normal. All right, so to recap, there's two ways that you can modify prefab values. You can click on the prefab itself in the project panel. You can make the, uh, make the change from here, and it'll automatically affect all of your pref all instances of that prefab. Another way you can do it is by changing a property on an instance of the prefab. Okay, But if you do that, you'll have to remember to click the Apply button so that it affects every instance of the prefab. All right, and, and, and again, if you want to have one of these objects, colliders for instance, set to the default, and you don't want that to be true for any other instances of the prefab, you simply don't hit apply, okay? And it won't affect the other prefabs. And that's all I have for you guys on prefabs uh, today. I hope you guys liked the tutorial. If you did, go ahead and drop a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Show us some support. Uh, but as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.